My name's Anthony Bigelow. I'm president for First Friends of Dandenong Creek. We provide stewardship for about 10 kilometres of the creek, uh, from the base of the Dandenong Ranges all the way out to, to Vermont. Just trying to achieve as best an outcome as we can for Dandenong Creek as, as possible. Dandenong Creek, post-European colonisation, a lot of the area's been cleared. So you have these pockets of vegetation that are still left, and there's a lot of animals still living in the area too. We didn't really know we had eels in the creek, that we have these fantastically amazing animals that are you know, living in our creek. And I'll guarantee that they're living in oak creeks across Melbourne, a species which I think up until now has been effectively hidden or forgotten about. My name's Wayne Costa. I'm a researcher at the Arthur Royal Institute, which is part of Victoria's Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning. Our recent research has provided valuable new information on eel ecology. Shortfin eel are a migratory fish species that are found in coastal rivers and streams in Australia and New Zealand as well as elsewhere. They're what we call diadromous, which means they migrate between freshwater and marine environments as part of their life cycle. Eels that we find in rivers and waterways around Melbourne are actually born thousands of kilometres away. After many, many years in freshwater feeding and growing, the adult eels metamorphose into what we call silver eels, where they migrate downstream and into the open ocean to spawn. Those spawning migrations take them back to where they were born, thousands of kilometres away in the warm tropical waters around the Coral Sea. After breeding, the adult eels die. The newly hatched larvae or leptocephali travel on ocean currents towards the coast where they eventually settle into fresh water. The young eels or glass eels and alvers travel upriver where they gradually mature into adults. Eels are important for a range of reasons. They're a top order predator, which means they can shape or influence freshwater ecosystems. And they also have really strong significance to indigenous people in Australia. I'm sitting here at the moment on my father's country, here on our beautiful Yarra River. And behind us, you can see some very, very still water. It's actually quite shallow. And then over to the right of us, and what you can hear in the background is the rapids. So over the thousands and thousands of years, my ancestors have gone, they've used it for fishing. And basically what they established was that this shallow pool here is a place where eels gather. What we would do starting from January is coming here, getting everybody in the water and putting all those rocks back up again. Because it's only used once a year for a week, maybe two weeks, because we've got to let a certain amount through that can still go out and breed. And it's all about the sustainability. You can't just capture everything. Once the rock wall's built up, it's, it's gathering dirt and river mud, pack it behind the wall. So you've got an actual dam wall. When it comes time, and we know that there's enough eels in there, the women would make these nets. And they would be secured there with sticks and rocks and built up around it. And the trap would hold maybe 12 to 15 eels. They'd pull the trap out. That'd be quickly brought up to the bank and a new one put in. So the men would be in the pool behind with our spears, just walking through the water, poking, stirring them all up and actually forcing them to move. We haven't done that in my lifetime. It hasn't been done, as far as we know, since probably the 1850s. But over the thousands of years that we've been here, it shows a, a, a connection to, uh, to the eel, which is sort of symbolic of Wurundjeri country. You really can't get as many as you used to. But for that, that just tells me, you know, that, that we're low in numbers. You know, the, the, the fish populations are declining, or have declined, We've got all these changes, ecological changes happening. It's because we've lost the path of caring for country. But just think about what happens downstream, what happens tomorrow. Three years ago on Melbourne Cup Day, there was a significant pollution event that actually occurred. All the eels and fish were killed from that. Uh, it was utterly heartbreaking to see. We know that Melbourne Water took away about 10 truckloads worth of eels and, and fish at the end of that week. The impact of these pollutants 
are often only seen when it gets so bad that you do end up with a fish kill. Obviously we don't want fish kills to happen. We actually want to pick up these events before that happens and actually stop the impact of these pollution events. We're at Bio2 Lab. Our major focus is pollution monitoring, remote sensors, trying to keep an eye on what's going on in the water quality. Yields are a big part of why we're here today. We're funded to be here by the first friends of Dandenong Creek and they're very concerned that the pollution they were seeing in the creek was harming the eels. There's pollution that you can see and then there's the pollution that you can't see. We can detect that with these sensors even though we can't see it. And this is important because the pollution that we can't see is often some of the worst. When you're talking about urban waterways, they can be sort of seen as just a, a large drain that sort of carries water. But often, if they're in good condition, they are often teeming with life. Under the surface of the uh, water, there's lots of different insects, there's fish. They are actually a great ecosystem if they're looked after. All of that life depends on clean water and habitat. So if we degrade that, we're directly cutting away at those support structures that support that system. One of the big problems that we see is insecticides, particularly in this creek. I would urge people to think very carefully before they apply insecticides anywhere outside because as soon as the rain falls on that, it will end up in the creek and they can be very toxic to aquatic life and very hard on the eels. Our stormwater will always eventually come here to Dandong Creek. And so whatever you put in it up there will always end up here. Our vision for Dandenong Creek is to see it in a much healthier state with reliably good water quality and uh, healthy eel populations. The eels are a keystone species in this creek, so if you've got healthy eel populations, you can be fairly confident that the rest of the creek is also in good condition. At an individual level, we have to appreciate what we've done to this environment since colonisation. We need to stop looking at a creek as a dumping ground, and we need to go back, uh, you know, back effectively in time to what and how this should still be looked at. We need to make that connection that it's something that, that needs to be cherished. <laughs>